All right, welcome everybody. So in this video, we're gonna work through an example of a, how we can perform a singular value decomposition for, in this case, a matrix A, which is a two by three matrix. And for our example, matrix A has first column four, eight, second column 11, seven, and third column 14 minus two. So I'm gonna go through this process and then we'll summarize the steps at the end. But first thing we'd want to do is do an orthogonal diagonalization of the matrix A transpose A, which is going to result in a symmetric matrix. So I'm gonna do that work on the next slide. Okay, so in order to uh, find the orthogonal diagonalization of A transpose A, well, the first thing we'd want to do is find this matrix A transpose A. Um, so up top, when I take A transpose times matrix A, that results, in this case, we get a three by three symmetric matrix. The first column of this matrix is 80, 140. The second column is 100, 170, 140. And the third column is 40, 140, 200. So uh, first thing to do would be, let's find the eigenvalues of A transpose A. And uh, here you can verify that we get three eigenvalues uh, of 3, 60, 90, and zero. Uh, and if you're curious about where these eigenvalues come from, uh, this example we worked through uh, earlier. And we also identify the eigenvectors um, for each eigenvalue. So here we have three distinct eigenvalues. So this gives us three uh, eigenvectors that I've identified below. So the first eigenvector W, for example, could be one, two, two. Uh, the second eigenvector corresponding to 90, the eigenvalue 90 is minus two, minus one, two. The third eigenvector W3 corresponds to the eigenvalue lambda three is zero. And that eigenvector, one such eigenvector would be two minus two, one. And now to find the orthogonal matrix P, which is gonna allow us to diagonalize the matrix A transpose A, that matrix P is going to consist of columns of orthonormal vectors that we get after making sure that the vectors we've chosen for our eigenvectors are orthogonal, and then we're going to normalize them. Um, our eigenvalues for matrix A transpose A are three distinct eigenvalues, so you can verify that these three eigenvectors that we found for each of these distinct eigenvalues will be orthogonal. So W1 and W2 are orthogonal, W2 and W3 are orthogonal, and W1 is orthogonal to W3. So um, we don't need to perform Gram-Schmidt here because we already have orthogonal vectors. Um, if you had a repeated eigenvalue, you very well may get two eigenvectors which are not orthogonal to each other at first, and so you may need to apply the Gram-Schmidt process. Um, but we have satisfied the orthogonal requirement. And so now let's normalize each of these eigenvectors. So V1 uh, is the normalization of W1. So the length of this vector is actually three. So we can normalize this vector by dividing each of these um, entries by the magnitude three. So uh, one orthonormal vector is V1 is one third, two thirds, two thirds. The second one is what we get when we um, normalize W2, and W2 also has a magnitude of three. Its length is three. So we can normalize that to the vector V2, which is minus two thirds, minus one third, two thirds. And then lastly, we normalize W3 to get the unit vector V3, which is two thirds, minus two thirds, one third. And so now, we can go ahead and express this matrix A transpose A. We can diagonalize it, orthogonally diagonalize it, where we pick a orthogonal matrix P, which consists of columns V1, V2, V3. So in this case, um, we've got that our matrix P has first column, one third, two thirds, two thirds, that comes from V1. The second column is minus two thirds, minus one third, two thirds from V2 
and the third column is V3, which was two thirds, minus two thirds, one third. And our diagonal matrix D here consists of the eigenvalues along the diagonal, which were 360 corresponds to this first vector. 90 is the eigenvalue corresponding to this eigenvector and zero is the eigenvalue corresponding to the third column vector. Uh, so here we've orthogonally diagonalized A transpose A, but our task is let's find the singular value decomposition of just matrix A. Okay, so we've orthogonally diagonalized A transpose A, and we've got our matrix P, which is an orthogonal matrix, and we've got our diagonal matrix D, um, which we found from the analysis for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for A transpose A. But our task again was to find the singular value decomposition of A. So we should be able to find some orthogonal matrix U times some not quite diagonal matrix sigma times some other orthogonal uh, matrix V transpose. So let's first go ahead and figure out what the matrices for sigma and V are. So um, our matrix, orthogonal matrix V, is going to just be exactly the same orthogonal matrix P that we identified in the diagonalization process for A transpose A. So our matrix V is going to be um, the matrix, 3 by 3 matrix, whose um, first column is 1 3rd, 2 thirds, 2 thirds. The second column is minus 2 thirds, minus 1 3rd, 2 thirds. And the third column is 2 thirds, minus 2 thirds, 1 third. Okay, so that gives us one of the matrices that we need. So matrix V is the same as the matrix P that we find with the orthogonal diagonalization of A transpose A. The matrix sigma, recall that this is going to be a matrix that consists of an R by R diagonal matrix where R is the number of non-zero singular values that we have. So we have one, two of those. So for us, this matrix D is going to be a two by two diagonal matrix. But altogether, this matrix sigma is going to have the same dimensions as the matrix A that we started with. So our matrix A that we started with was a two by three matrix. So this matrix sigma should be a two by three matrix. So that means it's going to have three columns and two rows. So um, you may have that this matrix sigma might be entirely a diagonal matrix, um, but usually it has a diagonal matrix followed by some, possibly some columns of zeros and possibly a number of rows of zeros just to make the dimensions of sigma match up with the dimensions of our original matrix A. So here our matrix sigma is gonna consist of this two by three matrix again, where the first two columns come from um, the singular values of our matrix A. So these, this matrix D, I should be careful, is different than this matrix that we started with over here. Um, so here we take the square roots of these entries, and that's what gives us the diagonal piece of our matrix sigma. So over here, we needed to add one row of uh, zeros, or excuse me, one column of zeros at the end, because this matrix sigma needs to have three columns. I don't have any rows of zeros below it needed because this matrix sigma should have only two rows. So here is our two by three matrix for sigma. So what's left to find now is just this matrix U that we'll do on the next slide. Um, but now we found um, this matrix sigma and this matrix V, and so the columns of this matrix V are called right singular vectors. So each of these three vectors that we found over here, we call right singular vectors because this matrix V is being multiplied on the right of sigma. Okay, so we are in the home stretch of this process. So we are trying to find the singular value decomposition of A. We figured out on the previous slide what sigma is and what the matrix V are by doing the orthogonal 
um, diagonalization of A transpose A. And so what's left to find is the matrix that we multiply on the left of sigma U. And before going too much further, let's just stop and remind ourselves of the dimensions of all of these matrices for these products to work out. So A is a two by three matrix. The matrices U and V are, they're both square matrices, but they have different sizes. So U is two by two, the two coming from the number of rows that our matrix A had. Sigma is gonna be the same size as matrix A. So that's a two by three matrix. And the orthogonal matrix V that we found, that's a three by three matrix. So this matrix U that we find, it should be an orthogonal two by two matrix. So we've got two columns that we need to find for this matrix U. And here's the formula for how we can find each of those columns. Um, the columns of U are gonna depend on the singular values, sigma I that we find, the matrix A that we started with, and the columns of this matrix V that we found. So we've found all of this information already. So let's go ahead and calculate the first column of this matrix U, U1, which is gonna equal one over sigma one times AV1. So in our case, our singular value, the first singular value would be the square root of the largest eigenvalue of matrix A transpose A. So the first singular value was square root of 360. That's the first entry we had over here in the matrix sigma. So to find U1, we're gonna take one over the square root of 360 times our matrix A, which again was 4, 8, 11, 7, 14 minus two times vector V1, which was one third, two thirds, two thirds. And so doing the math here, you can verify that this um, simplifies to three over the square root of 10, one over the square root of 10. So that's the first column of this two by two matrix U that we're gonna construct. The second column, we do the same way. Um, we now take one over the second singular value, which was the square root of 90. So I have one over the square root of 90 times matrix I times the second column vector in matrix uh, V. So that's the minus two thirds, minus one third, two thirds. And simplifying this, you can verify, gives us the column one over the square root of 10 minus three over the square root of 10. And now we've got all the information that we need. This matrix U, we just found both of the columns that we need for that matrix, namely U1 and U2 that we just found. So let's summarize our results by expressing our final answer in the form of A is equal to U times sigma times V transpose. So in this case, um, what we have is the matrix A that we started with was 4, 8, 11, 7, 14 minus 2. We can now write that as the product of matrix U times matrix sigma times matrix V transpose that we've mapped out over here. And so inside this matrix sigma is this little diagonal matrix D that consists of all of the um, non-zero singular values for matrix A. Okay, so before we wrap this up, let me just summarize this process on the next slide. Okay, so the process for doing singular value decomposition, which again is gonna take some M, M by N matrix A, and write it as the product of orthogonal matrix U times sigma times the transpose of orthogonal matrix V, it really consists of three steps that we went through. Um, first, we computed A transpose A, which is gonna be some symmetric matrix that we then orthogonally diagonalized and wrote as P times D times P transpose, where P was an orthogonal matrix and D was the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues. And so in that process, just recall some of the skills that you'll need to refresh yourselves on would be finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors possibly using Gram-Schmidt to make the um, set of eigenvectors that you find orthogonal, um, normalizing those set of vectors, 
and then constructing that orthogonal matrix P. Um, so that is the hardest part of the process. Um, and that's a part that of the process that we've already been discussing. So kind of step one is diagonalize a symmetric matrix. Um, then we can start to identify the various components of this decomposition. So the orthogonal matrix V that we multiply the transpose on the right, that's going to be exactly the same as the orthogonal matrix P that we found in the previous step. And then this matrix sigma is going to be a um, M by N matrix, where up here we're going to have an R by R diagonal matrix where the diagonal entries are the singular values, the square root of the eigenvalues of A transpose A. And then we might need some rows and maybe some columns of zeros just to make the dimensions of sigma match the dimensions of A. And then lastly, we find the orthogonal matrix U that we're multiplying on the left um, using the formula that the ith column of matrix U is going to equal 1 over the ith singular value times matrix A times uh, eigenvector for the ith eigenvalue. 